Good morning and welcome to the third Sunday of Easter at St. Mark's Episcopal Church in Richmond, Texas. We're delighted that you've joined us today and uh, we look forward to worshiping with you. We have a few announcements to cover. One is that um, uh, uh, materials for lessons for both Kids Kingdom and Godly Play are available on our uh, through our newsletter on a weekly basis. You can uh, uh, put them together at home and enjoy them at any time. Please continue to rely on the newsletter for information um, about um, our activities, uh, the videos that are available, the, the Bible study we have, um, other material like that. You can also continue to give uh, online or by sending your checks to the church office. Um, and uh, please continue to keep us in your prayers. Thank you. Thank you. 
Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Blessed be his kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Let's, let's do that over. Alleluia, Christ is risen. The Lord is, is risen, risen indeed. Alleluia. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hidden. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Blessed Son made himself known to his disciples in the breaking of bread. Open the eyes of our faith that we may behold him in all his redeeming work, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated for the reading. The first lesson for today comes from Acts 2. <clears throat> Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed the crowd. Therefore, let the entire house of Israel know with certainty that God has made him both Lord and Messiah, this Jesus whom you crucified. Now when they heard this, they were cut to the heart and said to Peter and to the other apostles, Brothers, what should we do? Peter said to them, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, so that your sins may be forgiven, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. For the promise is for you, for your children, and for all who are far away, everyone whom the Lord our God calls to him. And he testified with many other arguments and exhorted them, saying, Save yourselves from this corrupt generation. So those who welcomed his message were baptized, and that day about 3,000 persons were added. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. The psalm appointed for today comes from Psalm 116, which can be found on page 759 in the Book of Common Prayer. We will say this in unison. I love the Lord because he has heard the voice of my supplication, because he has inclined his ear to me whenever I called upon him. 
the cords of death entangled me. The grip of the grave took hold of me. I came to grief and sorrow. Then I called upon the name of the Lord. O Lord, I pray you, save my life. How shall I repay the Lord for all the good things he has done for me? I will lift up the cup of salvation and call upon the name of the Lord. I will fulfill my vows to the Lord in the presence of all his people. Precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of servants. O Lord, I am your servant. I am your servant and the child of your handmaid. You have freed me from my bonds. I will offer you the sacrifice of thanksgiving and call upon the name of the Lord. I will fulfill my vows to the Lord in the presence of all his people. In the courts of the Lord's house, in the midst of you, O Jerusalem. Hallelujah. The second lesson comes from 1 Peter. If you invoke as father, the one who judges all people impartially according to their deeds, live in reverent fear during the time of your exile. You know that you were ransomed from the futile ways inherited from your ancestors, not with perishable things like silver or gold, but with the precious blood of Christ, like that of a lamb without defect or blemish. He was destined before the foundation of the world, but was revealed at the end of the ages for your sake. Through him, you have come to trust in God, who raised him from the dead and gave him glory, so that your faith and hope are set on God. Now that you have purified your souls by your obedience to the truth, so that you have genuine mutual love, love one another deeply from the heart. You have been born anew, not of perishable, but of imperishable seed through the living and enduring word of God. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Now on that same day, two of the disciples were going to a village called Emmaus, about seven miles from Jerusalem, and talking with each other about all these things that happened. We're going to continue and hope that you can hear us, even if you cannot see us. While they were talking and discussing, Jesus himself came near and went with them, but their eyes were kept from recognizing him. And he said to them, what are you discussing with each other while you walk along? They stood still, looking sad. Then one of them, whose name was Cleopas, answered him, Are you the only stranger in Jerusalem who does not know the things that have taken place there in these days? He asked them, What things? They replied, The things about Jesus of Nazareth, who was a prophet, mighty in deed and word before God and all the people and how our chief priests and leaders handed him over to be condemned to death and crucified him. 
but we had hoped that he was the one to redeem Israel. Yes, and besides all this, it is now the third day since these things took place. Moreover, some of the women of our group astounded us. They were at the tomb early this morning, and when they did not find his body there, they came back and told us that they had indeed seen a vision of angels who said that he was alive. Some of those who were with us went to the tomb and found it just as the women had said, but they did not see him. Then he said to them, Oh, how foolish you are, and how slow of heart to believe that all that the prophets have declared. Was it not necessary that the Messiah should suffer these things and then enter into his glory? Then, beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he interpreted to them the things about himself in all the scriptures. And they came near the village to which they were going, as they came to near the village to where they were going, he walked ahead as if he were going on. But they urged him strongly, saying, Stay with us, because it is almost evening and the day is now nearly over. So he went in to stay with them. When he was at the table with them, he took bread, blessed and broke it, and gave it to them. Then their eyes were opened and they recognized him, and he vanished from their sight. They said to each other, were not our hearts burning within us while he was talking to us on the road, while he was opening the scriptures to us? That same hour they got up and returned to Jerusalem, and they found the eleven and their companions gathered together. They were saying, The Lord has risen indeed, and he has appeared to Simon. Then they told what had happened on the road, and how he had been made known to them in the breaking of the bread. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord, Lord Christ. We know you can't see us right now, but we're hoping you can hear us, and we're double-checking uh, uh, via text. And meanwhile, we're going to continue. He was destined before the foundation of the world, but was, was revealed at the end of the ages for your sake. Through him, you have come to trust in God, who raised him from the dead and gave him glory, so that your faith and hope are set on God. In the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. I'll continue. All right. Yes. Okay. The video is on. Wonderful. We'll continue. We can't see you, but uh, <laughs> you can see us. That's good news. The students who are having to do their schoolwork online in the last few weeks are not the only ones having to have themselves schooled these days in very new ways. Folks who used to think that Zoom was a noise that a car makes are now video conferencing with their friends. People who never thought they would ever have to use their high school algebra again have been having to look at charts on the curves uh, and have had to listen to mathematical analyses of populations to understand their risk. Uh, 
And the biological language we've been having to use is truly amazing. Does that sound too loud? No, the camera. Oh, okay. Camera's too low. All while oh, dealing with very okay. difficult changes. So we have had a tough time learning all kinds of difficult things together, okay? It's enough to make us feel overwhelmed. We feel like slow learners in this microbiology class that we are all in together in the last few weeks. Today, we see two disciples who are walking toward a town named Emmaus. They're dejected and distressed. They find themselves conversing with a man who asks them why they are so downtrodden and sad. They tell him the story of their teacher who was crucified and died, and then his tomb was found empty. These disciples who are on the road talk to their companion, this stranger, and they tell him all that has happened. How on earth could he be so out of touch with current events? How terrible it all was how devastated they are. They don't know what to think of what the women in their group have reported, that they found the tomb empty and that the women saw angels who told them that their teacher was alive. They're at a loss to understand these events. They also describe Jesus as one of the prophets of old. And then this stranger tells them that they're wrong about how they have viewed their teacher, Jesus. But there is more in the scriptures for them to understand. He is more than a prophet. You foolish ones and slow of heart to believe, he calls them. And he talks to them about all the evidence in the scriptures as they walk along together, teaching them. Something is happening to them as they walk together. These passages that he describes, one after another, paint a different picture. They build a new framework. They offer a fresh possibility to them as they talk together. They are learning a new and wonderful thing from this man that they have encountered on the road. Jesus, as they walk, teaches them. He reinterprets the prophecies from the Old Testament and he clarifies to them that Jesus had to suffer. It was not pointless or unnecessary or meaningless. He had to suffer. And he teaches them that Jesus was not just a prophet, but the Messiah, the rescuer of Israel, prophesied of old. There is another wonderful, subtle, but important thing happening here. It is in the way that the disciples come to recognize Jesus. They need to be taught by him first. They have some learning to do. His teaching opens them, opens them up, prepares them. Jesus walks with them step by step, teaching by teaching. He helps them to begin to understand. Then he almost leaves them, but they beg him to stay with them. And he sits at table and he blesses and breaks the bread and gives it to them. And we read, they are allowed to see and recognize him. And then he disappears from their sight. Jesus remains with them long enough to bring them to believe. And amazed, they hurry to tell the others about what has happened. Jesus calls them foolish ones and slow of heart to believe. And yet, even if they are slow, they change, they grow. Looking back, they remember, weren't our hearts burning when he was speaking to us? And the good news blooms in their hearts. Good news of the power of God to be lovingly, sacrificially present with us, patiently, persistently among us. This viral spread and global response is still something that is new and troubling. It is hard for us to take in what is really happening. On my quiet street near my office at the front of my house, I watch now and then when I hear a truck go by, 
and the traffic is almost exclusively delivery trucks. They come back and forth numerous times during the day because people are closed up in their homes up and down my street. Plans are underway to open up Texas. At the same time, masks are required to be worn in Harris County starting tomorrow. Some of us are going to need to stay isolated for safety for months, perhaps, no matter what, until an effective vaccine has been developed and distributed. Even as public places will open carefully and perhaps close as necessary as these waves of infection come in the coming months. We are facing plans that will have more instructions about what to do, things for us to learn how we can be together. Once we were here, and then we've had to do this. We're trying to move toward this, and we may have to move back toward this. And what we really, really want is this over here where we used to be. But yet we have to wait, wait for that time. The virus has been described as coming in waves, waves, rates of infection, and we're looking for it to lower, but we know it can rise. We at St. Mark's, like many others, are in a little boat trying to understand how to deal with these waves. Here is some advice that I love from an experienced sailor about how to steer smaller boats in big waves. And I think it applies to our situation. He writes, any wave that makes you feel like you and your boat are in danger is a big wave. All that matters is that the waves are challenging you and you are nervous about handling them safely. Here are some basic rules that can help. First, if conditions scare you, don't go out. Getting macho can get you and your passengers in your boat in deep trouble. Getting back to shore on Monday morning is not worth risking the safety and sanity of your crew. Second, he writes, there is no better teacher than experience, but to try to gain that experience, uh, try to gain that experience with an old hand aboard to help you learn. We need someone to tell us how to do this. Often the difference between the emotion, oh, we're gonna die, and the comment, well, that was a big one, is usually perception, also a careful twitch of the helm to change our direction, changing our direction in order to stay safe. Third, he writes, practice. Learn what makes this boat feel and respond best under current conditions. Going into the waves, while often scarier, is easier on the boat and driver when you do it right. And we will not return to worshiping together until we know how to do it right. Fourth, watch your speed. If you pay close attention to your boat speed relative to the waves and adjust accordingly, you'll find that sweet spot. And that's what we will be looking for in coming months as we worship together or take a break or worship together will be to find that sweet spot, that safe sweet spot together. When these rates of infection have lowered and they've stayed low long enough and we've made careful plans and gotten permission from the diocese and the state and county say it's okay, we will start to worship here together again. When we, want, when we start to worship together, we want to do it wisely with good understanding. If you recall the story of the Israelites, they travel for 40 years in the wilderness, complaining and fearful. And when they come to the promised land the first time, they are still not ready and they must return to the wilderness, traveling, maturing, growing, learning in faith as Moses leads them and teaches them about the God of Israel. Only when they are ready do they enter the promised land, only until they have shifted and come to trust in God and moved away from that fear. When we return to this space, 
Our worship is not going to look like how we worship together in the past. There will be smaller numbers. People will be more spread out. There will be more services. We will move forward on this road, learning as we go, doing this with care. God is for us. God is for the world. And can we see it? Can we see God at work among us? God's redeeming work is not static, but is always moving among us, between us, surprising us with such love, pushing us to grow and learn, learn how to believe. And yes, his suffering was necessary because of his love for us. In the busy world, before we were in quarantine, there was little time or, or uh, room for, for wonderful conversations like this that Jesus has with these two disciples on the road. But Jesus takes the time to stay with them until they could see him and perceive the fuller truth of the reality that he is the Son of God. Love takes the time. Love listens and opens the way to learn and to heal. The world of the heart, of wounds and flaws, of chemotherapy and not enough money, of brain damage and loneliness and new viruses and shortness of breath, of rumors, of wages, of toddlers and leftovers, that everyday world, that is where patient, persistent love matters so very much, and it shines like a beacon. And that is when we can see and recognize Jesus. Frederick Beekner describes it like this. Jesus is apt to come in the very midst of life at its most real and inescapable moments, not in a blaze of unearthly light, not in the midst of a sermon, not in the throes of some kind of religious daydream, but at supper time or walking along a road. He never approached from on high, but always in the midst, in the midst of people, in the midst of real life and the questions that real life asks. Jesus teaches us something important, being willing to suffer for us, and our hearts grow and we are changed as a result. <clears throat> our hearts are growing and stretching these difficult days. We have felt our hearts burn. Jesus is with us. We find ourselves stepping in where we can help and listening because we have been changed and we continue to be changed even now. The time will come when we will gather and share with each other how we experience the love of God in surprising and wonderful thing, ways during this time we are living through. With eyes of faith, we will see that our Lord has been with us and loving us all along. And we will say, as the disciples did, weren't our hearts burning within us when we were with him on the road. Amen. Let us stand together and affirm what we believe using the words of the Nicene Creed found on page 358 in the Book of Common Prayer. We believe in one God the Father and Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made, for us and for our salvation. He came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. 
On the third day he rose again, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended to heaven and is seated at the right hand of God. He will not come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken to the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. <clears throat> the prayers of the people, Form 4, are found on page 388 of the Book of Common Prayer. Let us pray for the church and for the world. Grant, Almighty God, that all who confess your name may be united in your truth, live together in your love, and reveal your glory in the world. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our prayer. prayer. Guide the people of this land and of all the nations in the ways of justice and peace, that we may honor one another and serve the common good. For Michael, our presiding bishop, and Andy, Jeff, Kay, and Hector, our bishops, and for all bishops and other ministers, for our president Donald and our governor Greg, and local elected leaders, for students and educators, especially for St. Mark's Preschool. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Give us all a reverence for the earth as your own creation, that we may use its resources rightly in the service of others and to your honor and glory. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Bless all whose lives are closely linked with ours and grant that we may serve Christ in them and love one another as he loves us. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Comfort and heal all those who suffer in body, mind, or spirit. Give them courage and hope in their troubles and bring them the joy of your salvation, especially for Tom, Julie, Joanne, Jerry, Troop, Brendan, Ashley, Sharon, Shirley, Sue, Greg, Carrie, Christopher, Shelby, David, Steve, Sharon, Judy, Larry, Bonnie, Bob, John, Terry, Heather, Jim, Cameron, Susan, Caroline, Dorothy, Callie, Ed, Bill, Matt, Shirley. And for all of those who are suffering the effects of the coronavirus and their families, especially for all medical professionals, and for those for whom the daughters of the kings pray. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. We commend to your mercy all who have died, that your will for them may be fulfilled. And we pray that we may share with all your saints in your eternal kingdom. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Lord Jesus Christ, good shepherd of the sheep, you gather the lambs in your arms and carry them in your bosom. We commend to your loving care of these children relieve their pain, guard them from all danger, restore to them your gifts of gladness and strength, and raise them up to a life of service to you. Hear us, we pray, for your dear name's sake. Amen. Almighty God, look upon these your servants lying in great weakness, and comfort them with the promise of life everlasting, given in the resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, peace I give to you, my own peace I leave with you. Regard not our sins, but the faith of your church, and give to us the peace and unity of that heavenly city, where with the Father and the Holy Spirit, you live and reign, now and forever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. 
Peace be with you, you and you. We panicked there for a moment because we lost our video feed, but uh, we're confident that you are there and still with us. <laughs> Peace be with all of you. Peace the Lord be with you. Love you. going to have uh, birthday prayers. Uh, we mentioned them last week, but their birthday is actually today. And that is both Emma and Abby. So let us pray together for Emma and Abby, who both have birthdays today. Oh God, our times are in your hand. Look with favor, we pray on your servants as they begin another year. Grant that they may continue to grow in wisdom and grace and strengthen their trust in your goodness all the days of their life. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. We don't have any anniversaries this week, so let us continue with a prayer for the absent because we are absent from each other. Let us pray. O oh God, whose fatherly care reaches to the uttermost parts of the earth, we humbly beseech you graciously to behold and bless those whom we love, now absent from us. Defend them from all dangers of soul and body, and grant that both they and we, drawing nearer to you, may be bound together by your love in the communion of your Holy Spirit, and in the fellowship of your saints. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. In the peace which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be with you this day and always. Amen.
Alleluia, alleluia. Let us go forth in the name of Christ. Thanks be to God. God. Alleluia. Alleluia. Much love. We're still learning as we go. Much love. <laughs>